<laughs> Don't look at me. Don't look at me. No, I think we're live. I'm pretty sure we're live. Okay, great. But um, hey, uh, yes. first thing, Daniel. First thing, I know yes. like it's kind of way out there, but I, I was um. reading that James Earl Jones, iconic voice of Darth Vader. You know, among other things, yes. Among other things, yes. Um, yeah. He's 91 years old, mm, and actor. he's mm -hmm. now going to allow the archive of his voice to be used to recreate Darth Vader and wherever his character will be used, which makes a lot of sense, right? I guess it does. Uh, I mean, it makes sense, yes, but because they're going to continue milking that cow until people stop paying for it, right? <laughs> um star wars i mean yeah yeah um the darth the cow <laughs> <laughs> um it does ask it brings up the my a thought in my mind though of at what point do you have to get permission from a person to take their voice mm. that they have been paid for and willingly given in movies yeah right they've been paid for it when do you have to get their permission to use that footage to come up with a a dictionary or or a whatever for a mm. for AI to speak it or do you just have to talk to the people to the people who own the movies the rights of the movies that's a really you know, good like, question no cuz you're right and and i think it's amazing that being able to combine the current wording of a, a contract that was written back in the 1970s for his first appearance mm -hmm. and still relate it to this you can't use my voice unless it was for the actual gig and and you know like that's amazing that they've managed to come to that kind of arrangement yeah, already i mean it just it, it it's just an interesting concept to me of hmm. you know because you've signed away your rights basically to yourself you've you know of for this thing for the yeah. words you speak and your free image in this thing a movie in this case yeah um or movies and so you've signed that away for pay so like you get paid again because now they're going to use it in a different way i'm not saying it's bad mm. i'm just saying i think it's an interesting place where you know, an interesting world we're in now that this is something we're considering and, and talking about. It's just, it's interesting. It really is. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, do you think they'll ever uh, have a high demand for our voices, Daniel, from this show and need to recreate us as characters? Well, maybe. And if they do, they're going to have a lot of footage because this is episode 255. So. All right. Let's get it started. Um, Hello. Hello. Everyone, welcome to episode 255. This is Daniel. Uh, and that, oh, wait, he's over there. This I'm time. over here. This look, I can fix that wow. for you. It's okay. Like here we go. Oh, that, there. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So that over there is Daryl. Hello. And uh, the mad scientist. And today we're going to be all about the awesomeness that is coming into Microsoft 365 and uh, giving you our thoughts on how you need to prepare for that change. Um. The but before we do all of that, let's make sure you're following us on socials 365 MCS on all them socials, and uh, also know that we do an audio podcast. Uh, some of you are listening right now on the audio podcast, but if you didn't know, we do have an audio podcast wherever you consume your podcast, we're there. I promise you, just look us up. Uh, you can do the 365 MCS or Message Center Show and, and do a search there, and you'll find us. Um, but also we are going to be switching to a new channel in YouTube. So for those that consume the video version of this, of the show, make sure you're following us at youtube.com slash three, six, five MCS, because that is where we're going to be broadcasting very, very soon. Right, Daryl? That's right. Yeah. I think, um, 
next week. Yeah. Oh my. That's well, close, we said two people. weeks last time, so I mean, we've got to be consistent with our countdown. We can't lie. We can't lie. No. No, we can't. So make sure you're following us over there because we want you to come along and, and join us there. Yeah. Uh, and it's been a good ride. Been a good ride. We do want people to enjoy the content, continue to engage with us. And mm-hmm. so with that, Indeed. let's uh, get into our first round of messages, Daniel. Um okay here we go (laughs) take a deep breath before you read this title sir yes i was about to say brace yourself everyone because this is a long title (laughs) meeting category trends and details in the viva insights app in teams and meeting category insights card in digest email mc43465 eight now this is probably, you know, we, we were talking about it before the show that this is could have been two messages, right? That at least it's two titles, it seems. Mm. Um, so this is uh, really utilizing the categories. And if you didn't know this, Outlook, the client and Outlook in the browser has had this capability for a very long time to categorize your meetings. Um, and you can assign a color to it. And so you can, I know some people who use color exclusively to kind of see, they know what it is and, and, you know, red means this and blue means that. Um, but others use those categories to, to keep themselves kind of knowing what's going on. So what this is going to do is use that. So if you're one of those people that categorize your meetings, then, Hey, you're going to, you're going to get this, uh, functionality. It's going to be uh, make use of this functionality, but um, this will be rolling out mid October and exp- um, the late October kind of end time for rollout. But for those using a uh, Viva Insights subscription, um, you will be able to get insights into your meetings and the the amount of time you're spending in those meetings and over the course of your calendar time. So, you know, days and weeks, be able to see, you know, where you're spending your time in your meetings and what you're focusing on. Uh, So this is, and Daryl's showing one image here in on the video here of one of the screenshots in the message itself of just seeing that timeline, but also seeing getting insights on, you know, what kind of, um, time you spent you know the time lapse in those meetings and and just understanding just because you've had twice as many meetings of one category doesn't mean you actually spent more time in them it could Mm. you know those could be short meetings so getting some insights on how you're spending your time and what your meetings are looking like and if your calendar is anything like mine it's stinking busy And it would take a lot of effort for me to look at my calendar and go, what am I spending most of my time on? Well, this gives me the capability of categorizing my meetings and then using Viva Insights to give me insights and give me that information about my meetings. Uh, Daryl, do you categorize your meetings at all? You know, I did for a little while. I had an internal category that would help me identify at a glance, okay? I'm using yellow, and that's when I'm working on things for WM Reply. But yeah. here's some other meeting blocks of time where this is paid client work. So good to see that color in my calendar. Um, but I think, Daniel, uh, I didn't really stick to use in those yeah. categories. And that's something that this is going to rely on, isn't it? We'll have to keep categorizing our meetings. Yeah, absolutely. So... Uh, I, same thing, I used to do it. I haven't done it recently, but I think I'm going to try it again so I can utilize this. So the important thing is when you're scheduling meetings to select the category when you're scheduling, you know, that's what I think because Mm. you're already scheduled, you're already picking settings and such as you go along, just pick a category for it. Um, What about the meetings you get invited to? As well. That's going to be the key is that when you receive those meetings, you're going to need to categorize them appropriately. Mm. Um, and so this, you know, for this functionality, it's going to look at um, 
the timing is going to be over the last three months, the last four weeks. Yeah. Um, so, and then the next four weeks. So uh, to prepare yourself, you know, next month is when this is happening. Go ahead and start categorizing your meetings now. And mm. so you'll be able to utilize this. Uh, so, you know, I think that's the, going to be the key here that um, if you don't have information on categories of your meetings over a course of four weeks, then this is not going to work. And then uh, if you have less than 40 hours of meetings uh, categorized, then you, you're not going to receive that information, um, that card in the digest email. Uh, that you get you're not going to see mm. that information either is that you think that's 40 meetings across 40 hours across the week or in total i think in total right yeah i think in total for uh the the four weeks yeah i'm, I'm believing yeah. yeah and i think um just rounding this out like it's going to help you just at a glance see where you are spending your time and potentially make some decisions based on that you know looking at meetings Hopefully. and deciding well, maybe I'll refuse that one and then I'll only have two meetings that I have to choose from in the same time slot. Well, I think it's, you know, if you're spending a lot of time, so I'm in consulting, right? I'm a consultant um, and I help organizations do amazing things with, with technology. But if I'm spending more time internally than mm. I am on client work, then maybe I need to stop doing internal as much, right? And I need to refocus. So this, along with whatever my goals are in Viva Goals, are going to help me. I, I have, you know, these five goals in Viva Goals to, you know, sh helping me understand what are my OKRs and what are my focuses and what are those outcomes. So if what my, this insights that I'm getting from the, the I'm spending time on, if it doesn't match up with that, then I need, I need to make changes, right? Mm. So anyway, I'm going to give this a shot because Good I think, um, and then uh, maybe I'll report back. So. Yeah, we'd be interested here. Speaking of Viva, I'd like oh, to do some we learning. Did, we did talk about Viva, yeah, that's right. Well, here's another one. Yeah, um, The Microsoft Viva. Viva Learning Cards are available for Viva Connections Dashboard, MC436419. Dashboards, dashboard cards, cards that are out of the box that give you all sorts of insights about your tasks and other things. Or maybe you've got a bit fancy and you've created a, a few custom cards. Well, if you are a organization that's using Viva Learning, or you're, if you're an individual using Viva Learning, uh, you'll have... Um, you can add a Viva Learning card to the dashboard. And so this would be one that you'd want to not have targeted. It's just available to anyone and everyone. Um, and remember, the dashboard is found in a couple of places in Viva Connections. It might have been added to your home site homepage. Nice. Okay. Uh, but it will definitely be in the Teams mobile app on the dashboard tab of the Viva app, which may have been renamed to your company intranet and may have its own logo. Dashboard, All right, so let's get into, uh, there is some differences. If you do have Viva Learning Premium license, uh, then you're going to see a little bit more. Um, so just without that license, you're going to see a shortcut, basically saying, click here to open up your learning. Meh. Okay, nice. I could have created that. But the <laughs> learning card um, with the premium license will bring through a nudge or two. Like, hey, you've got these courses that are assigned to you, or these courses are overdue. Uh, the cards, uh, we know there's two, two sizes of cards. So if you are getting that additional information through and you use the um, small card or the small, small, medium, the one unit card wide, uh, it will have that uh, information there. Overdue by two weeks, the security found that. Yeah, all right. So that's something to keep in mind too, is the limited characters of whatever that course is called. If it's named the same length as any of these message center messages, then good luck to you. Um, I recommend if that's the case, you would use this double or the larger card size and hopefully that'll fit. Um, but yeah, nice nudge there to say, 
so uh, and then there's this view and um, for those on the podcast this is what the the shortcut through to viva learning looks like without that um so yeah if you know how to add those cards they will be in your catalog soon to add there's a whole bunch of information at the bottom of that message to give you a bit more information about dashboard and viva learning but this is due <laughs> standard release viva connections become available to all tenants in mid September, which Now-ish. can we say thenish when it was thenish maybe because yeah. it's already been I mean mm-hmm. published on twenty first of September. Anyway, nice. Moving on. Yeah, it's it's a good addition, but um, if you don't have a license, it's pr- you're probably not going to be overwhelmed with this. Yeah, for sure. So next up, you know, let's do some migrating. You want to you want to talk about some migrating? Let's migrate to another topic now. Ha. Ah, stream migration tool, public preview and general availability MC437552. So we have had a lot of topics about stream on this show this year. There's been a major push if you haven't been paying attention about getting everyone up to speed on using that stream on SharePoint um, and getting people to stop using classic stream. Well, this is a migration tool that's been in private preview and now is in public preview. Well, now as in um, the uh, early October to mid October uh, timeframe was the rollout. So uh, then once it, it rolls out, the general availability will be in beginning of next year sometime um so uh, maybe the end of this year but around the new year's time so what this does is it actually uses the um migration uh process that we're probably well if you've been in sharepoint world migration then you've probably gotten used to the the migration manager platform and this has been built on top of that to migrate your videos from Stream Classic to uh, SharePoint. Uh, And so you're gonna be able to use that and do some reporting off of what you have. Know that it does things like it is gonna migrate your permissions for those videos, right? So um, you definitely wanna test this out, understand how that's gonna affect the way you utilize videos. So for some organizations, this is gonna be huge where it's gonna be an undertaking, just like any other migration, you're gonna to have to analyze the content that you have mm. and understand where it needs to be mapped, but then also uh, maybe tweaking things along the way. Um, and just because it's in the same um, the same channel, for instance, in Stream Classic, doesn't mean it needs to go in the same SharePoint site, for instance. Or maybe it does, you know. Uh, anyway, you're going to have to manage that from a migration. It's just content, right, that we're migrating. So you can do some reporting and um, figure out, you know, how you need to work on that and, and do that migration appropriately. Uh, one thing that I did want to call out is the, and what you can do to prepare, is that once this does next month go public preview, there's going to be a meeting invite in the documentation, which is the first link there and learn more, where they're going to have a meeting every other Thursday. uh, And once it goes that public preview, then you can go to those meetings. And in those meetings, the product team will be there to answer questions and help you get along the way from moving to Stream Classic to stream on SharePoint. So um, I think that's re- really cool, Daryl, to to see that. This is the first kind uh, message of its kind that we've seen something like that, um, where mm. Microsoft's hang, saying, hey, come ask us questions. Uh, we're going to be here for you. So yeah, there's, a uh, there's been a lot of people. Too, isn't there? Like the, the that? product group's going to learn a lot yeah. from the, the early sure. um, testing and trialing. So but sure. hats off to them for, for making themselves available to, uh, to part, be part of that process. Yeah, there's been there's been a lot of people waiting for this, so I uh, love to see that uh, it's coming public preview next month. Um and then and then you can collaborate live maybe with Excel. 
<laughs> I don't know. That was a terrible transition. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So um, he said it already. I don't need to. I don't need to say the title because Daniel covered it. Um, maybe I'll try again. T- cal- collaborate and <laughs> he stumbles as he's saying it anyway. Nice. Collaborate in team meetings. Teams meetings with Excel Live. We got wow. there in the end. MC four three six four two three. What is it? It is Excel online, but in the stage of a Teams meeting. Yeah. Oh, okay. It, I I minimize that, and, and it sounds like it's not a big deal, but it is. This trend of being able to bring in collaborative apps that are part of that meeting stage um, that uh, everyone can click into on that meeting stage and work uh, together on the content. Our first example of that was Whiteboard. Cool. Uh, it was redeveloped to be able to do that within uh, a Teams meeting. Uh, and we've now got Excel. Uh, so one thing I'd say, Daniel, is that Excel is still one of the world's most popular project management tools. So perhaps this is a, one way as a, a low-cost method to have a, a co-authoring session on that project plan if uh, the project manager's that relaxed about it. Mm-hmm. Um, we saw this in action, Daniel, on Saturday, uh, my Saturday, your Friday, um, there was uh, John Moore and uh, Andy Honeycutt, and they got the 365 live, deep dive, deep dive live, um, and they showed it off. Uh, so it is definitely Excel online, click in, add your content. Um, but you had some good thoughts about, like, how does this offer anything useful compared to opening it up separately in, a, in an app? Well, and I, so my question was just, you know, we can work – uh, collaboratively co-authoring on an Excel file uh, while we're in a meeting. Mm. So I can have it up on my desktop. You can have it on your desktop and we could talk and, and, but be working on it. Um, I think this, you did point out, this is a way to kind of keep the focus on one content. And so you can be looking at people and seeing their eyes and, and all of that rather than having a meeting on one screen and, you know, the, the file up and another and kind of doing, you know, back and forth with your eyes. And um, so I I get that. I think that's, you know, that's nice to be able to click in and, and work on that. My question though, then is, you know, Excel um, has, you know, sheets, multiple sheets in the workbook. Mm. So what if I want to click on sheet two and work on some things, you know, switch over there, for Mm. instance, we're looking at sheet one and, but sheet two has the uh, table information that's driving the pivots or whatever. Right. And I want to go and change that information. How does that work? You know, that's a great question. Like we see, and I'm showing the screenshot for those Mm -hmm. on the podcast uh, this appears to be the presenter view. Um, so mm-hmm. I'm the one presenting. Uh, actually, we didn't say, how do we get to this point? So oh. it, it is underneath that stage view where you go to share content, share a window, share a, a PowerPoint using PowerPoint Live. Mm-hmm. Then Excel will be another category and it will show you some of your recent um, Excel spreadsheets. Um, they, of course, will need to be saved in SharePoint or OneDrive. Uh, and as you're sharing them, they will uh, be shared with the people who are currently in the meeting if they don't already have access to it. So, um, hmm. yeah. Um, so once that has been shared and I'm presenting it and everyone else can click in it as well, I would say that if, if I clicked on sheet two, that's what everyone else is going to see. But I, I don't know if it means like because I am the presenter, and people are collaborators, whether or not they can do the same thing. Maybe they just get to see and interact with what I'm directing to them. So I think that'd be a good one to Maybe. clean up, clear up, eh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know, just be able to switch between. I just don't know. So that'll be interesting uh, to to figure out and call out. I think. Hmm. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in terms of timing. Uh, actually, I think it's already there. I remember seeing some people talking about it. Hmm. Where is our... When will this be... Oh, we will begin rolling it out mid-October. Expect to be complete. Hmm. 
late November. That's public. Yeah, I think they were just talking about it from a, a public preview perspective, not mm -hmm. generally available. Nice to see that, that desktop, Mac, and mobile are supported, but it won't be available in uh, Teams web meeting at this mm -hmm. stage. So if you're in the habit of joining a meeting quickly just in your web browser and not having to switch over to a tenant, you will need to switch tenants if, if this is what you have planned for a uh, collaborative experience. Mm -hmm. hmm. Indeed. Um, so that's that's four of our messages, but we wanted to quickly just go through some thoughts on uh, the um, Viva announcements, Daniel. Yes, on the September 22nd, there were there was a nice uh, event that was headlined by Sachin Nadella and with with other leaders uh, talking about and announcing the new Viva uh, applications as well as some enhancements that are coming to uh, existing Viva uh, applications. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think we, we heard about this new thing called Viva Amplify, uh, Viva Pulse is new, um, uh, the, some additional functionality with getting answers in Viva, information on people, in Viva, uh, change to the Viva homepage, uh, like a <laughs> yeah. Viva app homepage. So lots of uh, components here. And I think let's just, you know, if it's okay, what do you think about just kind of hitting on a couple of these? And um, yeah. and uh, so I think uh, first one I want to hit off or hit up on is, is um, Viva Amplify. Oh, yeah. This is kind of, for me, a, a it is a big deal because I personally experienced this along with other people I talked to experience this where it is difficult to um, re find information that has been communicated to you, but also it's, it can be difficult for us to figure out where is the best place to communicate to people. Mm. And it goes into this whole idea of, you know, we been we talked about, I think pre-pandemic, we were talking about, oh, um, work the way you want to and communicate the way you want to. It's like, well, that's not helpful when I want to com communicate one way and you want to communicate in a different way. How are we supposed to communicate? Um, but what Viva Amplifies is going to do is bring a one place to uh, bring in information uh, across different um, scenarios of, of bringing in announcements and, and such in one place, uh, centralize that communication process. And so authors are going to be able to, and you know, you think about leaders, uh, company, um, communications, HR, whatever, be able to um, communicate to employees across multiple channels um, at the same time and giving, uh, managing these kind of campaigns of mm. information. So uh, something that happens a lot in the U.S. is we have a uh, what's called open enrollment, which is a benefits period where people uh, have a period of time to select their benefits from medical benefits and, and other types of benefits that have choices um, that affect them for the next year. And so think about... Um, hey, we want, you really need to get everyone to go in and, and make sure their benefits are correct because if they don't, then they're stuck with whatever they had selected the year before. Maybe that's fine, but maybe not, right? But it's a huge deal at most organizations to make sure everyone knows. Well, what if some people don't go to the intranet ever? Poor souls. Um, but what if they don't? Right? How do I reach them? Maybe it's in Teams. Maybe it's in, in uh, Yammer. Um, and then the second part of this that I think I'm excited about is the metrics. Um, I, I can't wait to see the types of metrics we get to track. Uh, were these campaigns successful? Mm. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. Yeah, yeah. It's um, uh, I won't pass too much more comment because uh, we will deep dive on this a bit mm -hmm. later. Yeah, but... Um, looking at Amplify, it seemed to be one of the more complete solutions 
that is going to be released. Just looking at the feature set, it's pretty amazing. Daniel, well, one of my picks is Pulse. Uh, this, um, by its name, probably already suggests it is a way of taking a pulse of how people are feeling across the org. Um, this is a, uh, it's taking the Glint acquisition um, mm. and it's bringing it fully into that, uh, the Viva fold. Um, so this is a way for managers to set up quick surveys uh, to just gauge how people are feeling. You can pick from templates to make that easy for you. So if you're, if you're just looking maybe how, how are, are people like feeling close to burnout or um, how do they feel about this event? So you can pick a few um, templates and questions from that. And, um, you know, those, those answers will come back. They'll be gathered. They'll be anonymized. And uh, you as a manager can um, address those, show that you're listening, um, talk to the team and say, this is, this is what we're hearing and this is what we're going to do to address that. Uh, it's a good pairing with insights where Glint is about sentiment, how am I feeling versus what are my behaviors in the tool in terms of um, using the technology. So, uh, yeah, we'll look forward to talking a bit more about that later on. But, uh, Daniel, what is your next one? Yeah, the next one uh, that I want to talk about is the leadership corner. I think um, this is, and, and it really is kind of a similar, you know, a communications type of um, experience, but that I think is going to be huge for companies, especially larger companies um, that have the capability of, uh, that will have the capability of having a place to engage for employees to engage with leadership um, to understand where they're going because I think a lot of times uh, people don't have that um, ability or or think there's other things going on that they don't know about right and they want to feel engaged um, which we'll come back to that word uh, with leadership to understand where they're going so leadership corner is a component of Viva engage and it gives the leaders the ability to, uh, for people to follow leaders and to see their updates that are happening, but also see their stories hmm. um, and be able to um, ask, have a, a way to ask questions of their leaders. Um, so this is, you know, through like um, events or surveys, um, being able to really build that, um, you know, activities and such in this one place so that um, they can get engaged with from a leadership down uh, to employees and making it's kind of breaking down those barriers to uh, engage with your leadership. So I'm looking forward to how to see how we're going to use it, but also how or other organizations use this to just keep everybody um informed as to what's going on and and making sure they know that they're part of the team so i think it's going to be be really cool certainly is um what do you got one, well next for you it kind of connects to this because uh mm -hmm. you know one of the things that you can do in leadership corner is an ask me anything mm -hmm. that's leveraging questions and answers which is a, a good strength of of the viva engage uh, platform this one um answers hub is a way to aggregate all those questions and answers across the communities that you're involved in so that you can quickly go in there and check out, um, you know, questions that you might be able to answer, or maybe you can relate to things and upvote them. Um, you can ask your questions from this answers hub. And uh, one thing that's really clever too, they're making this smart connection through to topics, Viva topics, where topics at the moment is, you know, aggregated page that is built out by AI and helps you to you know pull knowledge together and you can get subject matter experts involved in curating that content well the connection between that and answer the answers hub is that um, if I ask a question and I use the topic tag and um, that topic tag uh, you know goes and basically says oh well, there's five of these subject matter experts I'm, I'm going to share this question with them and so in their answers hub they'll see like a queue of questions where they can go and focus on helping to contribute to the knowledge that they're an expert for. So I, I really think um, 
good to see another inroad and connection to another Viva product and both are benefiting from that. Uh, but also just this more natural way of sharing, discussing and getting to, to, to answers and sharing knowledge um, in a curated way. You know, we've seen the Q&A um, uh, functionality within, within Yammer and now Viva Engage for some time, but this is just, it's all putting it together and making it smarter. So um, very cool, very cool. It is. And I think, you know, there's just a whole lot to cover here and give um, kind of, you know, our thoughts on how it can be used. And, you know, also, there's going to be some a little bit of dust settling, as it were, of yeah. people understanding how this is going to work and questioning Microsoft, what does this mean? And, and maybe some revising some of the communication or not revising, but more of giving more detail or giving mm -hmm. some insights on that. So, um, you know, let's let's give it a little bit of time but i think you know we should do a deep dive on this and on our new channel so that kind of brings us back to making sure that you're following us on the new channel you subscribe to the new channel on youtube.com slash 365 mcs so that uh you can and make sure you hit subscribe and then you can hit the bell. I was just doing this on my mobile to show how to do it. You can hit the bell and say, give me all of the, let me know when there's new stuff and when we go live so that you can get all of the information there um, about Viva, of course, when we do that, but also the, all the episodes coming forward. This is an important time, everybody. Please go ahead and subscribe because we don't want you to, to lose out. We don't want to lose you. No, we don't. We remain connected to you, yes, and all mm -hmm. those other Viva trends. Um, yes. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this new channel because uh, we'll mm -hmm. we'll put a few more things onto the channel than just the show, and yes. hopefully it'll become a, a greater community resource. But that is us for this week. It was episode 255, and a pleasure to have you with us. We uh, hope that you have a great week. And Daniel, uh, all the best for uh, 365 Educon in Chicago. Yes, I'd love great time. to. If, yes, if anyone's there, um, please come to one of my sessions or workshop and um, catch me in the hall. I've got stickers uh, I'll be giving away, so make sure that uh, you just come grab me. Cool. All right, everyone. We'll see you again next time. Bye for now.